Shout outs for this video go to Hornby Train Spotting and Farming, Basic Miniature Painting, Trevor Rodway, Chris Davies, Fleetwood J, Love Minis, and Horlicks. Mind the gap. Okay, so um, I'm going to go straight in and say that this issue got a 10 out of 10 for the overall feel. Um, the the main component of this magazine is absolutely ginormous. Um, it's actually the uh, size of the magazine. Um, now, what we did, we had a little play before we began the build, and we actually compared the weight of issue 16 um, with the combined weight of the uh, front suspension, which consists of seven issues, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then 11 and I would est I didn't actually weigh them I just put one in each hand and I would say that they are roughly the same weight um, possibly with the suspension being slightly um, slightly heavier um, but one issue versus seven and the one issue holding up its own um, I think that that's absolutely magnificent um, the rating that we gave for the parts we did slightly twist the rating a little bit um, it should really have scored um, four points um, because we have the rear chassis frame two suspension springs uh, two limiting pads and four packs of screws and uh, we do notice that there's an awful lot of screws there's a total of 17 screws obviously some of these are going to be spare um, so what we've done is on other part works that I do I do rate two points per part because they tend to be large parts so we've actually rated the, the rear chassis frame three points and we've gone a point each for the suspension springs um, so unfortunately the best I can do is, is seven um, this is the kind of issue that you look at and you really want to give it a hundred percent so I'll leave the rest of the ratings as and when they come so obviously I check the mag I look through the magazine we have a little look and um, you'll notice that we spent a long time on the magazine and this was because in my issue um, ish there is no page 10 it goes page 9 to page 12 to page 11 and then on to page 12 again now the two page 12s are identical apart from uh, one of my viewers, Horlix, well done. He did spot that the, the, the bottom photo is different. So it's our speculation that the, the, the first page 12 should have been page 10. Um, and then this is the first draft for page 12. They've changed it, changed the photo because the words are absolutely identical. Um, but they've changed it, changed it to a final draft and then forgot to remove it and forgot to put page 10 in um, I did ring Harshette and uh, very very nice people at Harshette they did offer to send me another issue out and I said well hang on a minute I said um, I don't have a problem with the parts I said it's the magazine so what they've said to me is what they will do is they will open up a magazine for me um, and they will see if there's a problem with page 10 um, if there isn't then obviously they'll send me that magazine and uh, as they say Bob's your uncle um, however we suspect that this is an error that's gone to print and probably every single magazine has this problem um, so if you could possibly have a look at your own magazine uh, and then possibly feed back to me maybe just leave a comment I'd be inter interested to um, to see what your magazine is like um, I know that there are some youtubers out there and, and, and builders who don't read the magazine um, because they find it very samey um, and some people just don't read it and then they just throw it away that's absolutely fine um, but if you could just do that favor for me that would be wonderful um, I also I'm gonna begin doing some research um, the poster on, on this magazine um, I did find amusing um, <coughs> bordering on I can, um, 
Now I'm not a big feminist and I can see how some people would may take offence. Um, it's a poster for London Needs Women Conductors. It's a poster from 1950 and there's a lovely lady women conduct, woman conductor and uh, she's got this ticket roll and it's gone all over the place and that's create circles for them to put the words in and it says all about the benefits of being a, a conductor and the, uh, the, the description says a 1957 poster puts out a call for women conductors. This lady does not seem to have very good control of her Gibson ticket machine. Um, now that is am am amusing, however it fits in very well with social history. Um, we've uh, not long had the NHS introduced um, at that particular time. We have a lot more women coming into the workplace. Um, I believe unemployment is a, is a very good level at that particular time. Lots of people are travelling to work and of course they're travelling to work by bus which is why the route master had been designed to cope with that demand. Well of course more buses means more, more staff um, and the only, the only way they can get the more staff is to get women into the workplace. So from a social history point of view um, this build has become so much more than just, just the sum of the parts. Um, so I will be looking into that um, over the next um, so many hundred weeks. How many years are we doing this? Probably got about two years to go. Um, so I will possibly be going back um, over, the, over the previous issues because I do keep mine up. Um, I, I store them and then I, I will look at them from time to time. Um, so, right, so enjoy the build. So in this issue we're going to be fitting the rear chassis frame and in addition to this magazine you are going to need uh, issue 12 which is the left rear suspension arm and brake mechanism, um, issue 13 which is the right rear suspension arm and brake mechanism. Uh, we will also need uh, issue 14 which is the rear axle as well as last week's issue 15 which is the suspension arms bar um, so now the first thing to note is that when you look at the instructions they do look very daunting uh, the top tip that i've got for you is read through all of the instructions from section one all the way through to section eight before you touch the parts um, and then you'll you'll be able to see how we can break them down into small chunks very much like eating an orange. Um, if you were to eat an orange in one big go, it's pretty much impossible. But if you remove each section at a time, each segment, and that's it, one segment at a time, it's very, very easy to digest. Very much the same with this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the chassis frame part 16A, the suspension springs, 16B, there's two of them, and also uh, the part from issue 15, which is the suspension arms bar. Um, and you'll see that from the suspension arms bar, you have two protrusions that we put on. Um, you need to pop the springs onto those and then just pop it into the hole. You will see that I did test fit it beforehand. Um, and that's section one completed. Okay, so on to section two, what we need to do is um, where the suspension arm bar is, move that around towards you. I may not have done it this way in, in my build, um, but just move it towards you and then just turn it over as though you are reading a book. But keep hold of that suspension arm bar because obviously it could fall out. Just make sure that the, uh, they are still poking through the two holes there. And what you'll need to do is fasten those with a new screw to this build, an OM screw. Uh, remember that M stands for metal, so we're going to be screwing it into metal. Now what I did, doesn't matter whether you start on the left or the right, the 
if you look go by the instructions you'll probably end up doing the left one first excuse me and then just just screw the first one in just until it, it grabs then go over to the second one and then screw that one in just check that they're in properly check that they are going down correctly that they're not off center and then just screw them in I think I intend to screw them halfway in and then screw them all the way I think what I actually did was screw them halfway then three quarters and then all the way you don't need to over fasten these um, and the part will wobble once it's in um, and we went with that because obviously there is a certain amount of movement that we require on this but just make sure that they, that they are in securely. Okay, so on to section three, and we need to turn the assembly over back to its original position. And this time we're going to be fitting the limiting pad 16C. There are two of them. They're absolutely identical. You'll see a protrusion on the bottom. And where they go into, there's actually two holes. And um, it's very difficult to show you um, because there are so many holes and so many places. Um, but they're approximately the... Um, about the second lug down um, probably watch carefully now what I noticed was um, the suspension arm part it was up just a little bit higher than the limiting pads are going to be so I actually got my clamp and I just clamped it down just so that it held it down you can equally hold it with your hands um, but I found it easier with um, with a clamp if you don't have a clamp maybe you can use uh, push it down hard and um, pop some masking tape round or some sellotape um, I, I'm not happy with sellotape because it could leave marks um, but obviously just be aware we just want to try and just hold that down now I did have trouble with the first um, limiting pad what I ended up doing was taking it off and placing it on the other side and it, it that one went in absolutely fine then I went back to the first one I popped that one in and what I actually found was if if you look underneath where the screw would go through to on one side it's just worn a little bit and on the other side it's it's completely uh, um, sealed so perhaps um, perhaps that the screw was not a little bit too long maybe the hole wasn't cut big enough um, now I haven't marked this down as a problem because we did sort it out um, so when you use the screwdriver try to use the larger screwdriver as you can you need as much grip as you can on that screwdriver and uh, just keep going until it screws in always remember to use the forwards backwards motions um, and that just helps cut the, uh, the, 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 the thread into the metal and let's say it's hard work but it will eventually get there
Okay, so on to section four, and we need to take the uh, suspension, uh, sorry, the trailing arm, uh, part 14C. Obviously, that comes from part 14. Um, sorry, part 14C and part 14D, um, which you obviously assembled. Now, you need to take the assembly, asse uh, suspension assembly. Now, the way it's positioned in the magazine, and I believe might be the way the way I did it in the, in in my build, you need to have it so that the um, shock dampeners um, th there's a triangular bit uh, where the um, where the rear axle goes through, and there's two plastic shock dampeners on each side. Um, they need to be facing upwards. You then take the, um, the uh, do you know, I've forgotten what it's called now. Oh, my mind is gone, sorry. So you take the um, trailing arm, and the trailing arm base, you need to position that so it's, the base is actually further away from um, the axle than, than the arm, and just fasten that with an LM screw. Um, and it doesn't really matter about the plate quite so much at the moment because that can be manipulated into place so long as you, it looks like it is now on the video that is the correct way to do it and again take it simple take it easy um, you will be uh, it is a self-tapping screw um, oh my god my gray my gray hair there um, so pop that in carefully don't over tighten um, and what I've done is I fixed it um, because there's a bit of an optical illusion here because that trailing arm is coming out at an angle it makes the screw look like it's not actually in straight but if you just pull it backwards and forwards you can clearly see it is straight so just be aware it kind of plays with your eyes a bit once you're confident uh, then pop that in until it's it, it it catches um, but don't over tighten Okay, so the rest of the magazine, this is where it looks quite complicated, but if you break it down, it's actually quite easy. Um, what you need to do for section five is you um, offer up the suspension and you're looking for five points of contact. Um, you're first of all looking for um, the suspension arms. So this is the part that we made last week. Um, they need to go in. On the, on the other end, um, the, the end of part 13C and 12C um, they need to marry up the, the hinges need to uh, fit on the other end of the suspension and also the um, I keep forgetting the name of it um, oh sorry 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 right so the the trailing arm that's your fifth point of contact and then what happens is section six, seven, and eight, it deals with them individually. So just lay it all on. Um, you're looking for um, lugs where the where the lugs fit. You've actually got a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven holes, twelve holes, eleven. No, I was right with twelve, but you only need. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws because some of those are locating pins. So have a watch of the video, have a look at the magazine, and we're just gonna we're just gonna offer up or as I call it dry fitting.
Okay, so section six, and we're going to begin with the part that's touching the suspension arms bar that we fixed last week. Um, and that needs to be attached with um, two FM screws. So again, they are metal screws. Um, now I had a little bit of bother with this. I was a little bit uncomfortable because you can't, you can't get the, sorry, it's very hard to get the screwdriver because you've got those, um, um, oh, the, the little lugs, um, the limiting pads. It's actually limited the screw hole down a little bit so you can't quite get at it. So what I would do is, or what I've done, is I've popped the FM screws in and I've turned them very gently because it's going to be very, very easy to kind of get them about 10 or, 10 or 20 degrees off. Um, so twist them gently. They will go easily. On mine, one was a little bit more difficult than the other. But that's obviously the metal and uh, obviously note that once they're in you're not going to be able to twist the whole mechanism around too much until it's fastened completely um, but again it's, it's, it's quite easy Okay, so the next part is to screw down the um, the trailing arm base. Um, now this should have uh, a little a protrusion and two screw holes, um, and this will be fixed with two FM screws. Okay, and finally on to the last part, part eight. What we need to do is screw down the suspension hinges 12C and 13C, and they will each take two GM screws, and that's M for metal. Again, take this very gently. Um, just pop one in just enough so that it grabs, then do another one so that that grabs, so on and so forth and just keep evenly screwing them in you don't want to throw this off and then that will be the part complete Okay, so once that's finished and uh, the build time was well over an hour, um, again, this was done on live Twitch, so that may have slowed things down a, a, a bit, but I'm confident that it would probably take most people over half an hour. So what we do now is we have a little comparison with the finished view in the magazine, um, and then we do our little speculation. We look at where parts are going to go, what's, what's coming, um, etc and to be honest with you there isn't an awful lot to speculate about um, obviously we could speculate these parts when they were first being built but really we can't there's not too much to speculate um, 
but obviously that's stop and stops because we've got a new toy so we've got to play with it okay guys so enjoy Okay, so we've been very lucky this week. We've received two pictures from Chris from Aylesbury. And we've also been sent five lovely pictures from Dave Say, who's a member of our Facebook group on the Route Master build. Um, I think you'll agree with me that these were absolutely fantastic shots. Okay, so before I read the comments out, let's have a look at issue 17. And this says that it's going to have the second part of the chassis frame is connected to the rear chassis frame and suspension arms assembly from previous issues. Um, looks good. We've also had a sneak preview of issue 18. It's not a very good shot, but it's on the Hachette website. And it actually looks like we're going to be doing some back wheels. Um, that gives me mixed emotions as um, I didn't fi feel that the uh, rear wheels were my favourite part. Um, however, if it's a part that you don't like, probably best to get rid of it early on. So looking forward to the next couple of weeks. Okay, so on to the comments from the last video and Hornby Train Spotting and Farming Rights. Thanks again for the shout out you will get one on my build the route master on that channel i'm doing a stream in about 10 minutes obviously that was six days ago um i did catch the stream i didn't catch it live unfortunately because it clashed with when i was working um but i do love your videos hornby transporting and farming um like i said before they're, they're full of passion you really enjoy the build and that really comes through on the videos um if you want to have if anybody wants to have a look at the last video and uh, check his channel out it, it it really is a good build um basic miniature painting writes great stuff uh trevor rodway uh, writes a wonderful comment and these are the kind of comments that i'm after because they're good feedback he says another good easy to follow video penny keep up the good work uh chris davies writes awesome video and love your videos um, Chris is actually an active viewer on Twitch and uh, because he watches on Twitch he can give a lot more input into the way that I do things um, and he is he's very active I mean he did this one week as of a holiday um, you know my Twitch sessions aren't a prison sentence you, you can come and go as you please um, but he he's very active um, Fleetwood J writes thanks Penny for the shout looking good so far uh, Love Minis, who's another active uh, Twitch viewer of mine. In fact, she's um, actually one of my moderators, and uh, I couldn't do Twitch without her. Um, she says that model is so well engineered that notch on the cylinder will allow it to be held on with uh, with one screw without spinning. They staying so true to the real bus that it makes a wonderful model. Um, and lastly, Horlicks writes, again, he's a regular Twitch viewer, um, and he's giving an awful lot of input. He's, um, he runs a YouTube channel which is uh, very well made. Um, he's, you can see um, he's very technically minded, and he's able to give a lot of input as well. And he says, thank you, Penny, for the shout out. Very kind of you. I'm fairly new to the part works and new to YouTube. Um, to be honest with you that wouldn't show to me um, he looks like he's been doing it a long time um, but he continues to write but I am thoroughly enjoying it <clears throat> I completely understand your disappointment in regards to the build time on some issues but as you say it's all part and parcel of them um, hopefully next week you will have something to get stuck into until the next time take care have a good bank holiday 
Um, again, that's the kind of comment that I um, really do appreciate. Um, last week's issue was a tricky one for me. Um, I am looking at this build um, over the course of 130 weeks and we will get a completed bus over that period of time. Um, but at the same time when you've really been enjoying each week and you get to the point where you just can't wait till Wednesday and then you get an issue that has three pieces, um, it's quite difficult. Um, I could appreciate that um, if you bought those parts as a replacement part um, and they charge you just for the individual part. The price that I would pay, would I would expect to be paying close to the issue price. And then of course you have the magazine as well, um, which does have some value to me. It has some good articles. Um, I do enjoy reading them. And some, some of them I've read three or four times. Um, they are most enjoyable and they really help them with my knowledge. Um, I don't believe in just building a model it's nice to know something about it okay guys so i'm wittering on a bit now um i hope you've enjoyed this build it's been a lot more more to do than than um many weeks actually um so let's have a quick look look at the overall ratings um there weren't any problems um so to speak i didn't need to make any modifications to fix anything sometimes i needed a little bit of more brute strength um, but on the whole no mod so problem scored 10 points and I felt the instructions were very clear um, they seem to be a little bit better than previous issues um, and like I say the build time was over 30 minutes so that gives the total score of 94% um, and that's actually out of 16 magazines that's the seventh best magazine so in actual fact, that falls roughly in the middle. Um, so for the magazine, the middle magazine to be scoring 94%, I don't think we can complain too much. Um, but the, ov the overall score so far is 89.13%. Uh, and I've got to be honest with you, I think whoever designed this part work um, I think up to this point, they should be patting themselves on the back. Okay guys, take care and I'll talk to you all next week.